okay guys now let us talk about uh, the p53 which is called the quality controller of the cell cycle now why I termed uh, it as a quality controller of the cell cycle because actually it uh, controls uh, or regulates the cell cycle procedure in many uh, stages now whenever uh, we, as we have talked about the cell cycle uh, progress the cell cycle uh, control over different situations like the G1 phase, then S phase, then G2 phase, and finally uh, the mitotic phase. So when the cell uh, passes through all the stages of cell cycle, it it, it uh, encounters different checkpoints. One is the G1S checkpoint, another one is SG2 uh, checkpoint, another one G2M checkpoint, and finally the anaphase checkpoint. Now there are more major three checkpoints like G1S, then G2M and M phase checkpoint. Now this three checkpoint uh, is really tightly controlled uh, via different proteins and those proteins are cyclins and other accessory proteins are there which is actually control those checkpoints that they assure that the cell is properly maintaining all the required ingredients inside the cell which is the license for the cell to pass through all the steps. But whenever uh, the cell uh, is deprived of any kind of uh, this uh, components of the cell cycle uh, the cell cycle is been halted and this halteation of the cell cycle is provided by this p53 molecule by not only the p53 by other molecules like uh, inhibitory molecules of the cell cycle they are called the cy cycle inhibitory molecules and p53 is one of them as well as p21 is one of them p16 p15 is one of them and all these different proteins are there which is actually con which is actually conducting the destructive effect of the cell cycle okay and why we need to go through that because that is important if uh, suppose we have a cell we are having a cell and this says cell is having the uh, 24 uh, set of chromosomes suppose uh, after the division it will need to produce two identical cell each of the cell will have uh, has to have this two 24 sets of chromosomes but somehow during the cell cycle if anything wrong happens if the cell uh, uh, if, if the replication of DNA is not processed well if is not done well properly then this uh, same number of chromosome distribution cannot be possible in those situations what we will produce we are going to produce the abnormal cells instead of normal cells the production of this abnormal cell is highly fatal because this abnormal cell will no longer support the journey of uh, the multicellular organism so they will eventually going to die <coughs> sorry no, it, it will eventually creates the uh, <coughs> what we call the mutation inside the cell and this mutation will lead the cell to to ultimately the death so what we need to have we need to uh, have a tight control uh, over uh, the process uh, process of the cell cycle over all the passing of the cell cycle from one stage to another stage so suppose we have a, we are having a, sorry <laughs> actually it is it is becoming the gamma I, I intended it to draw G1 so again my, my mouse is again troubling me so suppose this is uh, the G1 stage and from this G1 stage we are going to go to the S phase now in there is a G1S checkpoint in this checkpoint is tightly controlled by cyclin proteins but suppose a cell in this G1S checkpoint you need to have uh, the access of different uh, suppose different uh, amino acid sequences, different DNA molecules for that purpose. If if anything wrong happens there, then then uh, this process will be stalled there. And after the uh, stalling of the process, what happens? This this other destructive proteins like p53 and other proteins will come and degrade those uh, the, this cell or uh, make the cell die, which is called the apoptosis or programmed cell death of a cell. Now suppose we need to go through this S to G2 phase and uh, from this transition phase we are having the checkpoint. Now in this checkpoint it is slightly controlled with some cyclin proteins and other proteins. Now right after the sensing this, pro not only the cyclin proteins but there are proteins like CHK uh, proteins or check point kinase proteins or CHK proteins. Now the CHK proteins are really important. They present in all those checkpoints or they accumulate uh, at the time of checkpoint situations and the CHK proteins actually sense the damage uh, in the cell cycle process. Now in this S phase we assume that the cell will produce the right amount of DNA molecule and as well as the right amount of RNA and protein molecule uh, to conduct the further round of cell cycle. But if it fails to do that 
then what happened uh, that then uh, it will produce some malfunctioning part of the cell as chk molecule the cell uh, check uh, kinase molecule is one of the protein which will sense uh, this malfunctioning production of protein now the chk protein is going to sense that that and as a re response of that as a response to to this malfunctioning proteins uh, production this uh, s phase uh, this this chk proteins will in incorporate this p53 proteins and other destructive proteins now this destructive proteins like p53 p21 and other proteins will come and will, will eventually lead the cell to go through the apoptosis or cell death and sometimes it will go through the product to damage the the dna parts okay so that's why this p53 and other molecules are really important for the quality controlling system of a cell cycle now if we look at uh, here and how are this cell actually sensing the different uh, damaging situation different malfunctioning situations so malfunctioning can most of the time occur mainly in the s phase because s is the synthesis phase they they the cell need to synthesize dna rna as well as protein so anything wrong happen most of the time the wrong thing happens uh, in this s phase now what happens sometimes there are stalled replication forks sometimes there are dna, DNA damages uh, not only due to the physical forces by due to the chemical changes and chemical or uh, the mutagen activity and there uh, can be the dna double strand break also and this breaking it can be done uh, via the different uh, procedure like uh, the radiation or the chemical damages or something like that so all this damage when happens into the genetic material that that come to play because uh, any simple and small amount of change in the genetic material will incorporate the large amount of phenotypic expression change that's why i need to be more and more concerned about uh, maintaining our dna maintaining our gene in the right place so what happens there are proteins like atr and atm these are the sensory proteins or sensing proteins so in the previous uh, part we have talked about different proteins which are sensing it and there are some proteins which is actually in incorporating the destructive proteins so this this damage says sensing system this overall quality control system is tightly controlled by three types of protein let me erase that this is a bad thing okay now this is the first right protein which are the sensing proteins or sensory proteins which are atr and atm in this case which actually senses uh, the different uh, dangerous situations or uh, or damaging situations like stall replication for dna damage or double stranded break and there are second type of proteins like chk which are called the checkpoint kinase or check kinase proteins now this check kinase proteins are the activator proteins which uh, is, which is actually getting the information from the sensory proteins like atr or atm now getting this information the chk is being become activated and the chk will incorporate the protein which is uh, uh, the effector the final effector uh, or response for that protein so this is the sensory protein this is the effector protein and we are having third kind of protein which is the response protein now this response protein is going to response upon this damaging situation which arrives okay so here suppose a uh, dna is damaged somehow the atm sends that damage it will give a pass on the signaling to this checkpoint uh, kinase protein so chk1 or 2 now the chk1 or 2 is going to produce this effector proteins uh, this this uh, response proteins which is p53 now this p53 proteins is start to do different works like it will go through this it will take the cell to pass through the apoptosis that means the program cell death and cell will eventually die and which is uh, the actual important way to kill that cell which is malfunctioning and also it can go through the cell cycle arrest it it can block the cell cycle to pass through the other the further steps it will block the cell as it as it is uh, during the cell cycle and cell cycle will be arrested and it can also have the dna repair because sometimes what happens uh, then they, there are small uh, dna damages which can be repaired using different proteins which is generally found inside the cell so sometimes the the dna repair signal uh, signal is being carried out and the, the proteins uh, for the dna repair machinery is incorporated and the proteins come on and they repair the dna that's how it's done so this is the system of how they control uh, this uh, machinery of dna damage in different regions or different times 
okay and now you are going to emphasize on this part on this p53 molecule and how p53 molecule actually go through this now if we activate p53 molecule much more than what happens the normal cell will be carried out through the apoptosis and the cell will die but we generally do not want that we do not want ptp53 to stay inside our cell for a long time for all the time so we need to produce this p53 only after only when we need them we need p53 only when we sense different damage inside the dna so so suppose there are uh, so how can we if we produce dna all the time that will be damaging for a normal cell so normally inside the cell we cannot find dna as it is but the but instead of finding the, the uh, p53 as it is we are we actually finding p53 incorporated with other type of proteins and in this case the proteins are called mdm two proteins in in case of uh, yeast cell we see this mdm2 proteins are really important proteins which just attach with p53 proteins and when mdm2 protein attaches with p53 proteins it will block the activity of p53 protein so p53 is no longer activated so it can stay uh, as uh, this mdm2 p53 complex for m for as long as they want and when the cell sense any kind of damaging situations then they just cleave out this mdm2 from p53 and we are having the p53 which is uh, just uh, this p53 uh, which is active now the p53 p53 will function now a question will be there then why we are doing this why we are producing much more p53 there the actual event is that we are continuously producing p53 and mdm2 is going and just degrading this p53 so not only we can find them uh, so i just just rephrase my words so we cannot find p53 along with mdm2 inside the cell so what we can find we can find mdm2 inside the cell which will rapidly go and degrade the p53 using proteasome degradation system okay now why it is it, it, it seems very very uh, uh, very dumb situations because the cell is uh, incorporating all those atps and energies to produce p53 and after the production of the p53 it, it uses the mdm2 and damage the p53 degrade the p53 why a cell will do this such, such a dumb thing the answer is no it is not a dumb thing because suppose uh, w w w this this damaging situation of DNA just arrive during the replication stage. So suppose in the replication stage some mistake has been done, and we need rapid production of p53. We need rapid supply of p53 in those situations. So if p53 is not abundant inside the cell, then how can we incorporate that? How can we uh, block that situation? How can we uh, go through the recovery process of DNA damage? So we need the accessibility of p53, and that is the only way of the all-time accessibility of p53. And it is toxic for a cell; it is dangerous for a cell. So we cannot stay, uh, uh, remain this p53 as it is. So we need to degrade the p53 as as soon as producing it. But when we need them, then in those situations we are just blocking the MDM2 to take the action of this degradation. We block the MDM2 to, to degrade the p53. We just separate the MDM2 from p53, and in those situations we can have much more. More p53 inside the cell accumulated in a particular very fraction of time. And that is exactly a cell needed in those dangerous situations, in in those very very uh, quick uh, uh, fighting situations. Okay, so that's why it is doing that. Now the actual machinery of activation of p53 is uh, denoting here. So suppose there is a damaged DNA, and this damaged DNA is actually uh, sensed uh, sensed by ATM proteins, which is the sensory protein. Now the ATM is uh, in turn is going to activate the p uh, p53 via the process of phosphorylation. Now a question, uh, uh, another very important thing I must tell you that the p53 molecule is not a kinase molecule that is a very very mis very very uh, important though very bad mistake which students make that p53 is not at all a kinase molecule it is in turn a protein which is called a transcription factor so this is an important transcription factor inside the cell and this transcription factor this is the structure of a p53 protein this is the n terminal this is the c terminal there are domains or uh, several domains you don't need to memorize this structure but just remember this p53 is a transcription factor it is not the kinase protein now what p53 is doing p53 is uh, start uh, to sit on uh, the regulatory site it will control the transcription process Okay. Right after the controlling the transcription process, it will produce some of the protein. It helps to produce some of the protein, which will eventually make the cell die. It will eventually kill the cell. 
Now what happens in this case ATM senses the signal and right after sensing the signal ATM uh, uh, actually phosphorylating the P53 when the P53 is phosphorylated not only it is only phosphorylated but also we are phosphorylating MDM2 why because MDM2 when it is unphosphorylated is in active form when the MDM2 is phosphorylated it, it, it become deactivated now in active form MDM2 uh, start to degrade P53 because we do not need P53 to accumulate in, inside our cell because it is toxic for our cell. So in normal situations where no DNA damage, so MDM2 is active, no phosphorylation, MDM2 cleave the D P53, help the P53 to be degraded via the proteasome complex. But suppose there is a DNA damaging situation arrives, then the ATM sends that, it will eventually uh, with some kinase proteins it will eventually phosphorylate P53 as well as MDM2. When it phosphorylates MDM2, MDM2 will be cleaved from P53. Now the P53 when it's phosphorylated is active and MDM2 is inactive so P53 can, can be present as it is inside a cell. We have a large amount of P53 accumulated inside a cell then. All the P53s are phosphorylated. Now this phosphorylated active P53 molecules are, uh, will go and sit on uh, the, the, the region, uh, the regulatory site for the transcription and it need to produce different proteins and those proteins eventually lead the cell to go through this apoptosis. Sometimes it will help the cell to repair the DNA damage. Sometimes it will help the cell to arrest uh, the cell cycle in the G0 phase. Okay, uh, or take the cell inside the G G0 phase. So that is the activity of P53 molecule in the whole cell cycle. It is also called the tumor repressor cell because in tumor cells uh, there are no maintenance of this cell cycle and cell growth. So uh, in this case, what is happening? This P53 molecule is actually blocking the growth of those, uh, uh, blocking those, uh, blocking the nature of making much more cell division. So it is blocking the the actual effect of uh, rapid cell growth or the proliferation so it is eventually blocking uh, the tumor uh, growth now now there are other cell cycle inhibitor proteins are there which is in turn blocking the cell cycle so so p53 is the master of all them and we are also having p27 and p21 now this p21 molecule is also important it is also a transcription factor and this can also block the cell cycle now how these things are actually blocking now we are having the gene of P21 where the P21 molecule is being produced and this is a pocket like protein as we have seen in case of retinal blastoma which blocks the activity of uh, E2F protein during the cell cycle uh, G1 phase. Now this P21 molecule uh, eventually is going to uh, attach with uh, the cyclin and CDK proteins like S G1 S CDK or S CDK uh, proteins like uh, cyclin B or cyclin E it will attach with cyclin B or E it will attach with the CDK proteins and block the CDK protein to become active in normal situations CDK proteins are active but whenever we have the high accumulation of P21 proteins it will go and just bind to uh, to this uh, active site of uh, this kinase or cyclin dependent kinases thus the cyclin Cyclin dependent kinase will uh, stop working and that's how it will stall uh, the cell cycle in a particular phase. So that's how they, done, they, they do these things. And why I call this P53 is a master uh, uh, among all this uh, controlling protein because P53 again controls the transcription of P21 gene. So this is the mastering all the production. So not only uh, this P53 is controlling the transcription of P21 gene, but also this P53 is controlling the transcription of P27 and P57 genes, which are also having the similar effect in during the cell cycle. So that's why this P53 uh, molecule and the presence of P53 molecule during the cell cycle is really, really important. And that's why cell uh, is rapidly producing this P53. So that's, that's ab all about the cell cycle inhibition and why we need uh, the cell cycle inhibition and that's, uh, I, I hope that's going to help you. Thank you.